Welcome to Storytime with Papa Henry. And we are reading the book Captain Daly's Crew at Thunderhead Lake by Craig Massey. Chapter 3 Little Rufus. We dashed toward camp and met Captain Daly coming to meet us. What was that, boys? he called. We don't know, Chuck replied. We thought it came from behind that mountain. From the camp, it sounded as though it came from the lake. Captain Daly appeared puzzled as he spoke. Pudge almost jumped with excitement. There's a deep, dark mystery around here. Slim puckered his face in a bewildered way. It sure does seem funny. There's not supposed to be any firearms allowed. The captain looked at Pudge, who was still dripping wet. Remember, Pudge fell in the lake. Did you fall in the lake? I guess I did, admitted Pudge ruefully. While I was in the water, I found this piece of cloth. Captain Daly examined it closely. It's a scrap of nylon, he said thoughtfully. I'm almost sure it is part of a parachute. Maybe it's from the red plane we saw, suggested Pudge. Well, it's too late to do any investigating. But tomorrow morning, we'll take to exploring and see what we can find, the captain said. Our first night at the camp was like most first nights under the stars. We sat around the fire and listened to the captain spin yarns about the faraway places which he had visited while at sea. We turned in about 10.30, but that didn't stop us from talking. The captain never told us to keep still. In fact, he joined in the conversation now and then. That's just one reason we love him. Not keeping after us all the time like some folks do. It must have been 12 when Chuck said, Fellas, if we're going to get up early, we better get some sleep. Let's pray and then douse the chatter. In no time at all, we were in dreamland. It seemed my eyes had just shut when a ball of brown hair flew in the tent, tugging at the blankets and lapping our faces. It was Sniffles. All out, I shouted, and we tumbled out of bed. Oh, oh, Pudge groaned, looking at his watch. Wow, only 6.30. I'm going back to bed. Oh, no, you don't, Slim rang out, making a flying dive at Pudge. They tussled and rolled on the ground for a few seconds. Then it happened. They got too close to the lake, and the two of them fell in. We stood around laughing, but not for long. Pudge and Slim cupped their hands and gave us the coldest splashing we ever had. After fooling around for a while, we stirred the fire, and Pudge fixed a heap of flapjacks. With honey, they were sure good. After breakfast, the captain read the third chapter of Proverbs. The fifth and sixth verses say, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. When the captain finished, Chuck said, Let's adopt the first phrase in verse 5 as our motto while we're here. A wonderful idea, the captain said. You boys would find those words good for your entire lives, not only for these few days. We cleaned the dishes and prepared to go on a hike to trace the source of the explosion. We were about ready when the captain said, Fellas, I've been thinking. We really shouldn't let the camp stay unguarded. Will anybody volunteer, or shall we draw straws? Draw straws, we shouted, each one hoping he wouldn't have to stay. The captain took a weed and broke it up with one real short one. Whoever gets the short one stays home, he directed. I pulled after Pudge, and an unhappy sigh escaped my lips. You can keep Sniffles with you for company, Slim said, hoping to cheer me up a little. He really didn't need to, because I wanted to try and get a snapshot of a bird with colored film, and you can't get very close to birds with a gang of fellows around. Have you ever heard of cameras using film? Yeah, that doesn't happen anymore, does it? And back then, most film was black and white only. But uh, 
this time colored film had come out. We've come a long way since then, haven't we? The others left about nine, promising to have the mystery solved when they got home. I found a snug spot under a low limb pine tree and hid myself with bird book and camera. The lake was about 10 feet in front of me. I sort of hoped a wood duck would swim close enough for a shot. I waited and waited. Not a bird appeared until along about 11, a rose-breasted grosbeak perched a few feet above my head. When he hopped on a lower limb, I snapped his picture. The click frightened him away, so I sat back to wait. I began to get a funny feeling, sort of like someone was watching me. The feeling was so strong, I glanced around a couple of times, but couldn't see anything. A half hour later, I still was looking around. Then I spotted something that made my tummy double flip-flop. Not more than 20 feet to my right was a big boulder, and just beyond it, I saw a fuzzy yellow head. I glued my eyes to the place and stared. Sure enough, a fuzzy wad of hair pushed into view again and disappeared a second later. The third time the head popped up, I saw it was a boy about 10 years old. When his blonde head disappeared, I scrambled from my hiding place and dashed around the rock and pounced on him. How he did scream. Let me go! Let me go! I ain't doing nothing! <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you. I just wanted to know what you were doing around our camp, I said. Nothing, he murmured. What's your name? Rufus Hasey. I can tell you that name sure fit him. His fuzzy yellow hair looked as though his folks didn't own a comb. It stuck out something like a porcupine, only funnier. He had to keep brushing it out of his eyes. His face was roundish with jet black eyes. His only piece of clothing was an old pair of man's pants, way too large for him. His feet were bare and were the color of the mud. What were you doing here? I asked again. I ain't got no friends, and I know there was a gang of fellers over here, so as I come over, he whimpered. Well, how did you know we were here? I asked. I seen you coming in that red and white boat yesterday morning. I seen you fishing last night, and I seen your two friends fall in the lake this morning. By this time, this little fellow had me guessing. He seemed to know just about everything. His quick eyes were studying the camp, also the houseboat out on the lake, every moment. He sure was a funny-looking guy. Somehow I couldn't help but like him, although he had me suspicious. Where do you live? I questioned. Over that way? He pointed to a spot north of where we saw Snapper's gas station and general store. It's on the boundary line of the reservation. Do you have a permit to trespass on this property? Nah, I sneak in all the time to fish. The game warden doesn't mind. He said once I was harmless. Rufus paused and then pointed to the smoldering fire. Ain't you going to eat? I'm hungry. Now I couldn't help but laugh at him for inviting himself to dinner. I took him to camp and opened a can of beans. How he did eat. He gobbled faster than Pudge on his favorite dessert. While he polished off a slice of bread buried under a layer of peanut butter, I asked, Roof, did you ever catch any bass in the lake? His eyes glowed and he swallowed a mouthful before he piped in a squeaky voice, Sure! I caught lots and lots of whoppers. One of them weighed over 35 pounds. I knew there wasn't a bass that big because the world's record was caught down in Florida where the bass grow really big. If Rufus didn't catch a whopper, he sure could tell one. And I caught a walleye pike so big I couldn't get him home. I shot a big deer last fall and I got a brown hound dog home and I got a beaver trap and, and, he stuttered running out of things to say. He was going to be a lot of fun, but I still wondered just what he was up to. To pick up a clue, I popped the question. Do you know Mr. Snapper who owns the general store where Snake River empties into Big Bear River? 
I saw the little fellow give kind of a shudder and glance around, scary like. Yeah, I know him, but he's a bad man. Why? He always chases me no matter where I am. I pressed another question. Do you ever hear explosions while you were fishing? Them's the ghosts that makes them noises, he whispered. I heard you one last night just about sundown. You mean you think the lake's haunted? Sure it is. Them ghosts come to the lake every night, and they don't like no one around or don't mess them up. At that moment, I heard a rustling sound off in the bushes. The next chapter is called Visitor.